Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Go to 11. Once again, I'm Nathan Bell. Joining me, as always, Zach Bartle. Zach, what's going on, man? You want me to give you a little life hack? Do it. If you want more unsolicited spam crap email than you've ever had in your life, <laughs> just start a Kickstarter campaign. <laughs> that if They're coming out of the woodwork. Oh, my gosh. And, and, and once in a while, it's like a real email about something. So I have to look at all of them. Right. Oi. <laughs> Jeez. Oh, man. But, that you know. That stinks. Ted Cluck SA collection, yeah, is uh, of four hundred and fifty dollars, which was our goal for um, just a little kind of uh, publi- publishing expense. We're up to eight hundred and forty six bucks. Boom, nice funded and then some, almost twice over. Nice, so that's pretty cool. And, and people can still hop on there. The uh, Ted Cluck SA collection Kickstarter, and this is going to be a really cool book. Brought to you by Gut Check Press, the official sponsor. Of these go to eleven this yeah, week. Buddy. I just made that up right now. Hey, that works, man. That <laughs> works. So, how long can people get on the Kickstarter for Ted's book? Oh, twenty-three more days to go. Oh, okay. And, uh, it's, there's some pretty cool stuff in there. Um, in the rewards, I thought, I'd never set one of those up. I don't know if you ever did, but I thought it was a whole heck of a lot of fun. Like coming up with the tiers and naming them and everything. Uh, nice. I, I was like, this would have been fun even if I never really went live with it, just just as an exercise in <laughs> uh, creativity, I guess. I don't know. Maybe we should start a Kickstarter for something. We should. You know, I, I could absolutely see a um, book from These Go to Eleven, a guide to certain movies, or I don't know. I mean, Ooh. There'd be a number of things we could do. I, I don't know, really. I'm not very good with video, but I've, I've dabbled with it. I don't know. There, there's all sorts of possibilities out there. Nice. Let me know when you think of something. I'm always all looking right. to add more projects to my uh, already over full <laughs> plate. I don't know why I am. I just, I know that I am. That's, that's one of my lovable quirks. <laughs> nice, nice. Uh, well, definitely check out uh, Ted's book on Kickstarter. When is um, so? So tell me how that works a little bit because I've I've purchased things on Kickstarter before, but I've not been on the back end of things. So how how did you kind of set everything up and get everything going? Make the you know with all that. It's almost just like putting together like a blog or something. I don't know. I didn't. It it wasn't much different from um, you know. Uh, licensing a title for a book on uh, Amazon or whatever. It just asked you all this information, except for that at every step. It's like, all right, it's going to take three to five uh, days before we are convinced that you're actually a person. Then, okay, now you did another step. It's going to take three to five days before we're convinced that your bank account's real. And then, so like, you'd be like, oh, this looks like I can fill it out in 10 minutes. But those 10 minutes were spaced out over like a week and a half because of all the, the like, you know, due diligence and stuff they're putting into it, which is gotcha. good, I guess. But, uh, yeah, it, it, it was re- really easy to, to throw the page together, and it was really fun to pop it up on, I think I put it on the Gut Check page and Ted's Facebook page, which I run. Um, I'm like, have you seen Entourage? Yeah. I like the Jeremy Piven to Ted. <laughs> uh, and and uh, basically watched it immediately just start to kick off and a bunch of people uh, get on board, which was pretty cool. Nice, nice. Good deal. Good deal. Man, I am uh, I am stoked about our topic tonight. Um, I I don't know if you are. Um, I'll find out in a few minutes. We are we are well, going I, into I tipped my thing. hand a little bit earlier before we started right, right. recording. <laughs> I'm trying to set the scene, man. I'm trying to set the scene. Uh, <laughs> um, so you and I both uh, went out and saw this past week, Captain Marvel. Um, and uh, first impressions, uh, right off the top, first impressions, man. Dude, it was it was way up there. Turk put it, when he's always uh, rating the Marvel movies as they come out. He put it solidly in the middle. Mm-hmm. I would put it in the top five. Yeah, yeah. It was great. It was, yeah. and, 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 and part of it was me just spite liking it because you know the you know we should probably talk about this Desiring God article and stuff and all the backlash against it and I, to me there was nothing there was nothing overtly 
ideological about it. It was it was just a fun, awesome movie with the same sort of generic girl power stuff we've been seeing since the nineties. Yeah, and I, I don't know. I, I I really thought the characters were fun, mm-hmm. and it was fun. You see, I I'm a I'm a Marvel Comics guy, so I already knew what the twist was going to be. Right, but my son didn't. Oh, I asked okay. Him at the beginning, I said, "What do you know about the Kree and the Scroll?" He's like, I, "I've never heard those words in my life." And I, so I gave him a little background, but not much. And so when when you know the big twist happened, he was like, "What?" And uh, <laughs> I was yeah, I was really impressed that they could take such a meh, mediocre character yep. like the original Marvel, which was a dude, not yep. Annette Benning, yep. um, and, which was basically like Marvel was like Superman. Oh yeah, uh, us too. And and it was just a boring character, Captain Marvel, and it was a throwaway character. And Marvel killed him. They were like, "This guy's so boring." They gave him cancer and killed him. Right. And uh, like now, it's one of the most interesting characters. It was such a well written movie. It, like like the writing was very tight. Yep. Um. The the narrative arc. I was like, this this was done by a committee, but it was a committee working tightly together. Yeah. And then. At the end of the the thing, I looked back and I thought, I can't find much for flaws here. The it was brilliant to set it when they did in '95. The music was awesome. Yes, yes. The whole vibe. She's wearing a nine inch nails t shirt, and I, like everything about it just made me feel good inside. Yeah. And isn't that what a Marvel movie's supposed to do for you? Yeah, absolutely. I I gr- agree one hundred percent. I thought. The timing in this was really well done. You know, my wife and I were talking about afterwards. One of the things she said was, you know, we've gotten used to these several plot threads running through the movies, you know. And so she's sitting there looking at the time at one point and she's like, man, you know, how are they going to introduce something else right now at this point? But they didn't. Like, what they did was they stuck with the main plot line and just worked it very well into the movie. And I thought it was uh, very well done. I enjoyed the characters as well. I thought the interaction between Sam Jackson and Brie Larson was fantastic um, and just really enjoyed it, it. To me, it felt like what Stranger Things did for the 80s. You know, sometimes like when movies try to go back and re and plant you back in the 80s, it doesn't really feel authentic. Um, Stranger Things feels authentic and I think that Captain Marvel does this very well with the 90s too. Like it takes yeah. you back to that time frame and you remember all of those things going on. You know, seeing like the hook VHS tape in the background of the blockbuster and, you know, <laughs> all these different things. It's like, oh my goodness, this is amazing. <laughs> And you know, what was so funny to me was my my son is like, oh, it's cool that they said it like like in olden times or whatever. And I go, <laughs> dude, did you know that when this movie is set, your mom and I were already dating? And he gasped. <laughs> he gasped at that. It, but to me, like, I mean, everyone, you know, college and late, late high school, I feel like are magical years because you're just kind of becoming who you are going to be. Yeah. You're stretching your legs with some independence, but you don't have a ton of responsibility yet. So it's just such a beautiful time. Yeah. I think about like the summer of '95. I think about nothing but like uh, dry, you know, getting in my car. I had like a three mile long like monster tank of a car. Getting yep. in that car, driving down to you know downtown Bay City. There was this big river. There was all the you know. There's just there was nothing to do, and we were. Doing it, you know what I mean. Yeah, and, yeah. and when I hear those songs again, yeah, uh, I'm only happy when it rains. I never would have thought of that song the rest of my life had it not been for this movie. Yeah, and oh my gosh, I loved, I loved all of that. And then instead of, I think what what you know, Stranger Things did so well. I mean, every it did everything well. Stranger right, Things, right? Right. Oh was yeah, a masterpiece, and I can't wait for the season three. Yes. But one thing it did is it, it was like. We're going to give equal attention and and pour equally into this setting and treating mm-hmm. it with love, but not as a punchline, you yes. know. Yes. And the characters. Yes. So you have in that in that series this archetype of the the douchebag bully and, yep. and Mike, and then they let him grow out of that. 
Yes. They were like, every 80s movie had this antagonist who wanted to ruin the plan of the protagonist for no discernible reason. Right. And they gave this guy that role, and then they were like, no, he's growing out of it. They, they let him change, and then they introduced another guy, you know, the next season. But, like, I feel like Captain Marvel, and, and there may be people hearing me say this going laughing, going, what, you really thought there was character development? Yeah, I did. Yeah. That, and, and if you knew anything about the comics behind it, with, uh, you know, Photon and stuff, and, and how they tied in some things that were um, just really cleverly done, but, like... I don't know, they, they didn't spoon-feed you a lot. And I like movies that don't do that. They never had her have the definitive flashback. Right. They had to piece it together like we did. Yeah. And I don't know, that, that and I've always been a big fan of Amnesia movies, by the way. The Long Kiss Goodnight, The Bourne movies. And anything where yep. somebody's got to figure out who they are, that's, right. that's really fascinating to me. And it was just, Jude Law is one of my favorite actors of all time. I freaking love that guy. Anytime I see Obi-Wan, what's his name? Oh, uh, um, Ewan McGregor. Ewan McGregor. I'm always like, oh, that should be Jude Law. And, and uh, like, he was so good in this. Yeah. And and he was so different from what he yeah. always is. It, really, I did not have a single complaint about it, whether it was the so-called politics of it, the the way they fit that character into the overarching story late in the game, but did it yeah. by doing it early before the game started. Right, like, right. N- none of it bothered me because yeah. I feel like they put a lot of love and care into this and they had a sense. I almost got the sense, and I know I'm talking a lot, but I'm going to hand it off to you in a second. That's all right. <laughs> almost all got the sense that like they knew this was it with Stan Lee, right? Like like we're coming to the end yeah. of, of phase Whatever it is, which is going to be the the massive main arc of like Marvel 1.0, right. uh, Marvel Cinematic Universe, and and like they wanted to just go out with a huge bang. Yeah. And instead of hey, giving us yet another, I and mean, I love Captain America, but yet another Iron Man or Captain America, they were like, let's do something new, right? And then smash that new thing into all the old and and let it you know come about. And when I saw when I saw Stan Lee on that bus, oh yes, or, or, or train, train, reading, yeah. practicing his lines from Mallrats, yes, I I turned and you know how like you'll turn it and look at your friend yeah. knowingly and you'll both smile really big when I turned to my son to do that and then I was like wait a minute you better not know what Mallrats is. <laughs> so I look I look at him with like my mouth all open smiling and he's like what <laughs> I'm like oh never mind true believer. And, all right, yeah, so give me your, your thoughts here. Yeah, no, I mean, everything you said was absolutely spot on. I thought um, from the very beginning, they had you and you were engaged with this character. And, and, and I'm the same with you. I really – I like those trying to figure out the backstories. You know, I knew – I didn't know as much about Captain Marvel as I did about the – Cree scroll in general, um, right? Yeah, a little Fantastic Four reading and stuff will give you background on that. Without, yeah, because because really Captain Marvel's not that important in the comics, and the Cree scroll is a backdrop for a ton of Marvel stuff. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And so, you know, what they did with it, I thought was just really fascinating, and I, and I'm wondering if they're going to play off of that because, particularly with the scroll. Um, you know, there, there are huge storylines and threads that, you know, move throughout and set up the, you know, set up the base for other storylines and threads that happen all throughout, um, the comic books. And so I, I, I'm glad that they introduced that and I'm fascinated to see what they're going to do with that in the future, because I hope they do, I hope they do more with it because that was always one of my, favorite storylines was what they was that that scroll storyline in in the comics so i hope they do more with that and go on with it but for me this was this was great i thought they introduced like you said that plot twist was introduced very well in there um you know the what you think is going on isn't necessarily what's going on and and you learn that and it develops and unfolds very naturally. I didn't – sometimes I walk into movies and I'm like – I'm looking at the movie thinking, 
man, there there is something missing here. You know, when you get to a specific scene or, you know, you skip ahead a few scenes and it's like there is something missing here. And you look at the deleted scenes and you're like, you know what? This would have made more sense if they had kept this yeah. in there. It I bugs the heck out of me. Yeah, exactly. And I didn't think that once looking at watching this movie. It, everything just flowed very naturally and the story came together and unfolded very naturally, which was great. Um, and – you know, I'll I'll even say you know um, Marvel. You know, in the comics, he was a dude and and all that. But like, it didn't bother me that they changed it to Annette Benning. Like that that stuff that that didn't bother me. I thought it was a good enough story, and the way things pulled out, he wasn't as main in the storyline, or she wasn't as main in the storyline as he was in the comics, and. And, you know, I, I'm fine with that. You know, I thought it was an explanation to get to where you needed to go. And I thought it satisfied the explanation. Yeah. I and mean, who wouldn't rather look at Annette Benning than some right. dude anyway? Right. right. Um, and, and, you know, so so that's – it was it was perfectly told. It was one of those stories where it reminded me a lot of like um, the, the tightness of Winter Soldier, which yeah. still is a better – movie than this one because yeah. you, you you'd be hard pressed to come up with a better kind of fun action movie yeah uh, than that but the the like thing that made everyone talk about it for good or for ill was all this tangential political or cultural stuff mm-hmm. yeah i don't know if you saw the article that that uh, greg some somebody or other wrote for desiring god that like blew up on the internet yesterday um, I saw one article. I can't remember who it was by. I don't think it was the Desiring God article. Was it? Was it kind of for or against? It was way against. Okay. No, the one I saw was was very much in favor of it and defended it from the perspective of you know um, you know godly womanhood or something like that. Um, right, so, so probably it was a response to that because this was it could have been yeah well beyond the normal scope of people who would know about or care about Desiring God. Like, okay. I mean, um, Talk to me about that since I didn't read it. What was... I, I can probably quote part of it verbatim. Okay. Uh, okay. He said, like, the the subtitle or, like, like slug line was something like, my, how far we've fallen since sleep, Sleeping Beauty and Snow White. And it was all upset. And this wasn't even, like, the same, like, quite the same flavor of of uh, whining as like the people who thought this was going to just be another wokeness, you know, mm-hmm. uh, like heavy handed political uh, thing crammed down people's throats. This was like in this movie um, there, you know, you're in this fantasy world of where women are strong and, you know, in, they're they're protecting men and they're fighting and and the message is don't be feminine and there shouldn't be any difference between men and women and I'm like I didn't get that at all yeah um, and he he just really hated that we've fallen so far that that the the only real celebrated heroes that our girls have now are girl, women that act like men and I tweeted that I got exactly where he was coming from and I thought I knew what he was trying to say and he said it horribly mm-hmm. and he probably knew right away that he said it horribly once people started responding to it. Right. But at the same time, I'm like, dude, this isn't new. Why yeah. why, why this movie? Like, I mean, yeah. Mulan going way back, like 15 right. years or more. She saves a day and fights and is, you know, is arm in arm with, with men and... And, and I mean, you know, you can go way, way further back to like uh, Judith uh, or uh, JL or any number of uh, biblical characters, right? Where, right. Or, or the woman who's like, uh, "Hey, look what I found! A little upper millstone action," right? Uh, and drops it on uh, the head of Abimelech. I mean, it's it's not. It, I, I feel like so much of that stuff. A, mm-hmm. you just you just missed a great movie because yeah. you were so looking for something wrong with it. Yeah. And B. It's there's it's such a propensity, yeah. and I think this does us a huge disservice to confuse like modern Western, Western European and American last couple centuries mm-hmm. gender roles yeah. with biblical manhood and womanhood, yeah. and say if you're not going by the latter, then what you're must be telling us is that men and women are the same and there's and there's no difference. Yeah. And I'm it, like, no no there, there you could say what about column C where right. men and women are not the same but you don't have to conform to outdated 1950s yes. uh, gender roles. Yes. 
See, and I, to me, I found that one of the big differences, and this is why I actually just really enjoyed this movie, is that is that I thought the exact opposite. I didn't think they stripped her of her womanhood. I, to me, the reasons why she was doing the things she was doing was because of the tenderness in her heart. You know, where guys will do things to protect, but there's there there doesn't tend to be that tenderness involved in there. That tenderness was was seen all throughout this film. She did it because she truly, you know, from from that perspective, it was it was a motherly thing, in my opinion, where she was trying to protect, um, you know, and you saw that dynamic scaled down into the friendship that she had with with, you know, her best friend and her mm-hmm. daughter. And then. You know, I think it was translated into the other people that she truly cared about, you know, which she came around to care for uh, like, like I, I don't think a, a male character would have made that connection that quickly with Nick and, and chosen not to abandon him. Right. You know what I mean? Like, there, yes. yeah, there was definitely a and I mean, you just look at the poster and you'll see, OK, this is a feminine character on one level. Right. And I don't even mean like that she's hot, but she's, right. she's definitely that, that's always part of the kind of like. You go, girl. They're they're acting masculine and looking very, very pretty. Right. But but beyond that, like th- th- there was such a um, kind of sisterly camaraderie type thing about you know the best we can do right now is test fly these things. Yes, and and I don't know that to me. I mean, if you want to see a movie that takes that theme and goes nuts with it. In a very '90s way, watch G.I. Jane yeah. with uh, Demi Moore yeah. and Viggo Mortensen, uh, yeah. which I thought was also a super awesome movie. But it, this one just didn't go that route. It just it, it gave lip service to that because naturally that character at that time period is going to have that as a struggle. It's going to be a conflict, right? And they did it in the most '90s way to be faithful. And you know what it reminds me of? How everyone hated Indiana Jones four. Oh yeah, and it was all like, oh, why did he get in a fridge and get blown by, by the, you know? And and I and I'm going, guys, you're missing the biggest thing. The originals are set in the 30s, right? And they are entirely 1930s B movies or the right. early 40s. They're like what you'd see in the cinema then. That's that's why they were like that. This yes. one is set in the 50s, and it's just like a 1950s adventure with some sci-fi. This is why it's like this. And this movie was set in the 90s. Right. So, yeah, of course, there was a little, like, extra PC little stuff. It was almost tongue-in-cheek at some times. Right, right. So, yeah, I, I, I felt like even that element gets an A+. plus. Yeah, yeah. No, I agree because... You know, you and I have been talking about this, and if we have time, we're gonna we're gonna talk a uh, little Dragon Prince season two. We're we're in a time where things can get very, um, you know, politically correct, and agendas are being thrown out left and right for different topics and things like that. And you just, I. I remember watching the movie and being like, okay, how are they going to play this? What's going to happen? And it was just – it was fun to watch. You didn't – they didn't throw any of that stuff in there and it made it such a great movie without any of the over-feminism femini- coming through, overtly feminism coming through in, in, in a negative way. I think it came through in a very positive way but it didn't come through in that negative way. And they didn't bring in um, what is becoming more and more popular with the LBG, you know, Q community. And I think you missed some letters there, man. Whatever. You know, I mean, (laughs) I think they're adding letters daily. So um, can I just (laughs) say like, that you don't know, right. Can I just say like the A to Z community? (laughs) There you go. Um, (laughs) You know, we love the A to Z community, like everyone. (laughs) That'd be nice. (laughs) But you know, I mean, you, Nothing was thrown in there to, you know, to make you scratch your head and be like, man, you know, I wish I hadn't brought my boy to this. I wish, you know, this, you know, it was just, it was so well done on so many levels and the topics that were hit were done very well. And in my opinion, done very non-controversially. Now that's in my opinion, since there apparently is a lot of controversy out there, but I, it, it was it was great, and I would just definitely highly recommend you know highly recommend it as a watch. Why do you think it was rated PG thirteen? I couldn't uh, figure that out. I I think that it probably had more to do with like the um, 
intense moments and like the the the, the violence fucking- the yeah like the sci-fi <laughs> violence and like even the blue blood that's coming out like I think that's probably what it was more than anything. I think there were a couple of uh, language components in there um, that that probably bumped up the rating, but I I think that it was minor stuff, but it was enough that you know when you're doing your check tally sheet, it's like okay, this is you know we we got to move it out of the realm of PG into PG thirteen. Yeah, I, I sadly I don't notice the language stuff as much as I should. There are often times where I'm like, oh, this movie would be okay for Calvin, and I put the DVD in, and I'm like, holy smokes. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone is. I mean, you know, there's like four f bombs in the first ten minutes. Right. Um. But but yeah, I don't remember. I don't remember being like e. I wish you know. I I had waited to let him see this, because I I you know, I did the. You do your due diligence. You go on and you check yeah. like the f word counting sites and like the ones that are like, you know, like eh, 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 yeah 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 eighteenth <laughs> of a second of a nipple and like you know whatever and you're like okay right. well I'll just you know, take all this into consideration and use some discernment. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that it was a, it was a, a good family. I mean, what a good message! What yeah. here's the here's what I heard that people hated. Mm-hmm. And I mean, I don't. At the end of the day, push me on what's the message that's applicable to us. I don't know. Don't right, do, right. don't don't abandon your friends, and um and don't you know hold tight to indoctrination you've been given if it means demonizing people. That yeah. sounds like pretty good stuff. That's kind sure. of she 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 let herself. You know, say no. I I want to do what's right, not just what I was told is is right. Right. And even, yeah. I'm sure there are people who, with the supreme intelligence, were like, "Well, that must be God," and so they're vilifying God. No, if you knew the comics, you'd know that that's not a, a picture of of God in the capital G sense. Right. Um. And, and then there were people who who were like, "Well, this is you know, what are we teaching our daughters? Here's your here's your hero who finds out that she's more special than even she thought that she was." And I'm like, dude, yeah, but that's what we're teaching all of our sons as well, with everybody right. from you know Captain America yeah. to to ev- everybody. That's yeah. that's just that's it, you know. Right. And, and you know what, what was funny and occurred to me was, um, and this is totally off the subject. I, I wanted to bounce this off you though. I was thinking earlier. Sure. Is is Spider Man the Tom Holland Spider Man mm-hmm. the only superhero? In the Marvel Cinematic Universe, not counting Netflix shows, but like the the movies, mm-hmm. who has a secret identity, like actively right now in that iteration of the character. Um, I think you might be right. Isn't I, that weird? Uh, well, I don't know if I don't know if people know Bruce Banner. Is the oh, Hulk? Man. Yeah. Okay. I mean, certainly some people do, but I mean, right. he's not even he's not like currently working in a lab, and everyone's like, right. "Oh, Doctor Ben!" Like he's in hiding and stuff. Right. He's not fighting. Right. Or he's in, or he's off on another planet in a gladiatorial. Right. Matches. Right. But, but I like, think think about Justice League. Yeah. You've got Superman, Batman, Barry Allen. You know, everybody's got like uh, Diana Prince. Everyone's got their yeah. traditional. And and Marvel was like, "Ah, we don't need that stuff. That's played out, I guess." And I, yeah. I don't know. I don't know what I. Th- I just realized it suddenly, all at once. I'm like, this Mar- this Captain Marvel does not have a a, a uh, another identity, identity anymore. Yeah. Like, yeah. I mean, she she blasts off and goes to right wrongs, and right. no one's going. Ooh, is she uh, Carol or is right. she? You know, yeah. she doesn't wear a mask. Oh, she what? She does wear a mask. I thought the mask was cool too. Yeah, it, it was. was cool. Yeah, it was it, it, very well done. Um, yeah, I'm th- I'm trying to think about that because I know that there was a push. I mean, because in the comics, everyone had their identity, and the thing about um, Captain America is, even with him, like I I always found his identity a little awkward because it was always seventy years in the future. You know, no matter where it started, it was always seventy years in the future, or how you know. I mean, it, they just kept pushing the time further and further ahead. Because it was always set in World War II. But for him, it was interesting because everybody knew Steve Rogers was Captain America. You know, but well, he still would sometimes. wear the mask. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the mask he would still kind of wear anyway. I know, I remember in the comics, Hawkeye always wore a mask to protect his <laughs> identity. Yep. Um, I don't remember Black Widow wearing a mask, though. Did she? No, I mean, because she was a spy and I think she was... Okay, uh, kept herself hidden. I guess um, Ant Man. Ant Man has yeah. sort of no. Never mind. He was arrested. They know that he had the technology. The government knows who he right. is. Never mind. No. Uh, yeah. in, the, in the movies, like that, is it was just so funny to me. Like uh, that's one thing that I, I've always enjoyed about 
uh, comic book stories right. is this kind of dual survival, you know, dual life, and and DC is running with it, and there's very very little of it with. I mean, and it was the most fun aspect of yes. like Spider Man Homecoming, right? Yes, watching him trying like off saving his friends and right, uh, and, uh, you know. So yeah, that was just a weird thing that occurred to me. Yeah, no, I mean, and, and actually, Greg and I talked about that because I remember when um, when the first Iron Man came out, and you know, he he outed himself then. It was such a money line. I was right like, at the end. Yeah. <laughs> and then it goes into da, 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 da. Oh my gosh, I love that movie. That first yeah. Iron Man movie is A plus plus plus. <laughs> yeah, I it it is such a good movie. The the thing is like when Greg and I talked, Greg was like, Oh, I absolutely loved it. I'm like, Yeah, but here's the thing, like the the problem is like you've you're cutting out so much from this character now because you know, the reality is Tony Stark in the comics was like the Tony Stark of, you know, the movies, but, you know, Iron Man was always, you know, more, I I thought he always had a lot more depth to him, you know, because he had that transformation, but he knew that as Tony Stark, he really couldn't fully embrace it. But the change came when he was in the form of Iron Man. So there were, you know, whenever he was in Iron Man, you know, that's who everybody loved and embraced. And then as Tony Stark, people embraced him for his money but thought he was a total D-bag. You know, and now it's kind of like, well, both Iron Man and Tony Stark are total D-bags. Um, yeah, but I mean, the thing with uh, – it, it wasn't well done in the comics where they – man, we're nerds um, – where <laughs> he pretends that Iron Man's his bodyguard – it's like, mm-hmm. what? That's, that's silly. It's like what I would have come up with when I was reading these comics, you know, in the early right. 90s. Oh, what are you? And, and so, and just, I don't know, they, they really redefined that character in a way where the comics now just mimic what the movies were. Right. <clears throat> Has anyone ever been cooler than Robert Downey Jr. in that role? Um, and like, like, really, normally, if I saw someone with that meticulously groomed of facial hair, I just want to punch him. Right. But because it's Tony Stark, I don't. Right, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, and I'm trying. I'm trying to think through some of the, you know, th- the others. You know, I mean, Thor. Um, even I mean, even Thor had, ki- you know, a secret identity, kind of. And yeah, would, yeah he did. He did, especially know. when he became. Uh, there was a second Thor. He was yes, like bearded, and his name was Eric something. I don't know. I, I I didn't follow that stuff real closely. I was always more of a. Uh, bat related and Punisher related type stuff. Gotcha. And then whatever touched that, I got into. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I you know I I got a friend who you know big comic book and big Marvel person. I mean, growing up, I I hit more of the DC side, um, and I've I got I I hit Marvel a little bit, but I I was definitely more on the DC side and, and read more of those. But um, you know the for me like one of the things that I always talk to him about is like, you know, it, it doesn't matter at this point, they're working for this organization. And I think they avoided, they did a good job, like particularly with Clint's character as Hawkeye and being like, yeah, he has this family, but they were moved off grid. So his part of his identity is portraying this kind of sort of playboy guy, you know, um, not really like Tony Stark, but like, yeah, you know, hey, I'm, you know, free and single and blah, 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 blah. But he's got this family that's been hidden away. And, you know, the reality is he's still this family guy. And so I thought they did a good job at even when they introduced the secret identity, it wasn't in the way you expected it. Yeah. Yeah. And, and uh, they kind of left us going, why did they bother with all that? If he was right. going to just disappear, and right. then you were watching the end game trailer, yes, and and he turned his head thirty degrees, and you went, "Oh my gosh, you're talking!" <laughs> yeah, so cool. Yeah. Now let yeah. me ask you before we get to the Dragon Prince, and yeah. maybe I'm just stalling. Um, <laughs> in general, what is yeah. your opinion of as a, as a Christian? Yeah. Who who probably believes that men ought to protect their wives, yeah. and daughters, uh, yeah. and that uh, women and children probably should get off sinking ships first mm-hmm. um, and may even do something as old-fashioned, hateful, and patriarchal as hold a door for a woman. <laughs> um, what, what do you think when you see this kind of uh, surge of women 
fighting and and uh, you know that the, the kind of action movies where women are in there with the men, yeah, um, and and pounding on people and, and stuff. Does that make you? And I'm not even maybe so much initially from the biblical point of view. We've already talked about that. Sure. But like, does it just rub you the wrong way? Does it seem unrealistic? You and I both know that you know a, a 120 pound woman. Ninety nine point nine percent of the time, yeah, is not going to be able to hold her own against a two hundred and five pound man. It's just yeah. not going to happen. Oh yeah, yeah. So, w- what are your thoughts when you see that kind of thing? Yeah, you know, I have uh, in in terms of what I'm seeing in the comics, it doesn't bother me, and and here's why: because it's it's fantasy people. I mean, it's right, right. It, you know, and so it's like I can appreciate the fact that this, you know. 100 some pound woman has these superpowers and is able to do these things you know and if and if we're to translate this in real you know i mean but but again it's fantasy you know if this was real life and she had all those powers then yeah i'd have no problem with her saving my life because the fact is if there's an alien invasion and i have no powers then i want the person who has the <laughs> alien powers to kick their butts like <laughs> you know <laughs> what about a non sci-fi movie like something like uh uh, this is not an endorsement of this movie because it had some really rough stuff in it, like <laughs> some some so a lot of skin and stuff. But I've seen it; I can't unsee it. Uh, and, and there was some coolness to it. I watched it because it was very very eighties uh-huh. and Iron Curtain. It was called Atomic Blonde. Oh, uh, it was I, Charlize Theron. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and uh, she was fighting. Um, yeah. you know, other she was a, a spy, a double agent. Yep. and uh, she's she's in there fighting these KGB guys. Yep. and 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 stuff. And you know, to me, the real challenge in all this is to make it look real. And yes, there, I mean there are women who aren't you know like all biceps and abs. Yes, who do know how to fight. Yes, um, and, and like there was a movie. Called Salt. Did you see this? It's oh a yeah. Story. Oh yeah. Uh, Angelina Jolie. It was a fun. It was a fun movie. It, it was. was. Dumb. Yeah. Um. But like the way they choreographed that. I mean, Angelina Jolie's a little lady, even yes. though she's got like you know you can tell she does a lot of push ups. Right. Like in in real life, even though I'm out of shape and yeah. she's undoubtedly in amazing shape. Right. If we went a few rounds, I think I'd win. Yeah. Um. I can say that. I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't do it because I'm old fashioned and right. patriarchal and hateful. But. Uh, <laughs> The way they did the uh, choreographing, and I think they did some of this, even though um, Carol Danvers had the powers. Right. Uh, they did some of this with that, and they certainly did with the Atomic Blonde stuff, a lot of it. Yeah. Where they have the women using, for example, just using gravity. Yeah. Like, she, Angelina Jolie would run towards somebody. Like, there's a guy who's like a stocky, you know, agent. Yeah. She would run hard, jump like, like run up the wall, not, yep. not like in a kung fu way, but just right. like take a step up that put her a foot and a half above this guy yeah. and then punch him on the way down yeah. so that it amplified the punch. Yeah. And yeah. that can make, you know, that watching, it's always fun to watch someone smaller whoop someone bigger yeah. in a fight on screen. Yeah. Uh, whether it's Indiana Jones or, you know, Jason Bourne or whoever. And, and when you add, like, the the man is like, oh, you don't want to mess with me, little lady. Like, and then you're like, oh, this guy's going to get it. He's going right. to his words. It, there's just something even more enjoyable about it. Yeah. So the challenge, I think, is to make it seem like, wait a minute, this is plausible. Right. And, and like, the, the this person is trained to, to use pressure points and yep. throws and pins and and use their surroundings and, and that I think that's super fun yeah. and I really think a lot of that's a lot of like um, women's self defense is is built on that kind yes. of stuff yeah and I watch that and I go you know women should watch that and think to themselves you know I should be able to defend myself yeah because yeah, yeah men should def- defend their wives right but the men aren't always there and I don't right. want to live in a, a society where women. Don't feel like they can go somewhere without a big strong man to protect them. Yeah, um, you know maybe that makes me uh, liberal or something. But <laughs> the, those kind of stories they they've always I've always loved the um, kind of trope of yeah. the woman, especially the woman who you would never expect it from, who has right. you know just so much fight and, and so much of a fight, right? Is who's willing to just go 110 percent right away? Yes. Yes. And not let the fight slowly escalate fairly. Yes. But like you shove me and I knock your face off with yeah. a mallet. I mean like, yeah. like and, and, and like the, these characters sometimes they're just 
ready to to end the fight before he even yes. starts. Well, uh, and it's, I, it's it's fun to see. And I think um, I, I'm going to get to that point in a second. But you know, I, I we've talked about it before. I've been training in martial arts for a very long time. Um, I would say about um, six, maybe seven uh, years ago. Might have been a little bit longer than that, but somewhere around that time, I was sparring with uh, a girl. Um, she was, I think, 20 at the time, um, half my size, half my weight, and we're sparring around. And I'm, you know, I'm not going full throttle. You know, this is a sparring match. This isn't, you know, you know, Rumble in the Bronx. Hit and, don't hurt. Um, yeah, and and so the thing is, like, I was, I was misjudging the speed of her kicks. And she came up and nailed me with a roundhouse kick in the jaw and dropped me to my knees. Like, but that was because I was not paying attention, you know, and, and think about that in terms of reality. I mean, a guy comes up and isn't expecting a girl that might have some training or experience with fighting. And, you know, there is a natural inclination for us as guys to think we're the biggest, baddest and meanest and like... You know, like to to not put the proper amount of weight and emphasis on being properly and adequately prepared for the fight we're going into. Um, you know, and this was just in a sparring match. Um, if if you know, when I had dropped to my knees, if she had continued on, I would have been I would have been toast. You know, she hit me. You know, I mean, the jaw is a knockout spot. Um, and it was just it was right there. It was a perfectly placed kick and. And I, you know, I'm a trained fighter, and I still did it. Um, you know, and so arrogance is a huge thing <laughs> that you know can really can really take someone down a few pegs. Um, you know, and, and the other thing that I was getting to is is the end that not end scene, but that scene in, in Captain Marvel toward the end, where you know. Um, and I think we've probably have, – have we done a, spoilers? I think we've probably spoiled enough at this point, don't you? <laughs> I don't feel like we've spoiled anything. I've been very <laughs> careful not to. OK. Well, then I won't. But the character at the end you know, is like egging her on and how does she handle it? You know, Just a simple, <laughs> a simple blast and it's done. You know? yeah. And to me, like that, that just shows, again, the, the simplicity of what you're talking about, you know? the the person is trying to disarm her you know and she's not going to she's not going to put up with it you know it's like nope boom we're going to we're going to end this now um you know and to me that shows you know just the wit and the craft you know craftiness the intelligence of this character that i really enjoyed now i i've written a couple of books where women fight against men the mm -hmm. women being the protagonists um mm -hmm. But th th that's maybe one thing good that I got out of my contract with uh, Thomas Nelson. They like made me add women, and I was like, you know, it's interesting to try and write this way. And it was a natural thing for me then to to the sequel to Playing Saint, um, which was my probably my most famous book, and that it was even sort of famous at all. Um, the sequel to it, I mm -hmm. had uh, the the main character be a, a female cop, mm -hmm. and uh, a couple of scenes where she fights guys and uses. Uh, and I did a lot of reading on this. Like, mm -hmm. uses uh, a lot with gravity. Like, yep. if you can lock someone's joint with, or, or apply a pressure point and then drop your whole body weight to the ground. Yes, it's not significantly different if you're 200 pounds or if you're 115. Right. You know, it, you know, just like a, a feather minus wind resistance falls at the same rate as a cinder block or whatever. Right. right? Yep. So that may not even make sense. But what you know what I'm saying? Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. So like a lot of that, and then a lot of like. Um, I had a, a scene, and it, it, what was great is Gutcheck was publishing this, so I could put in anything I wanted. Unlike with with the Christian publisher, where a lot right. of stuff got nixed. A scene where she she's fighting for her life and just goes right for the the balls on a guy. Yeah, and thinks to herself like, men have every advantage in this world. <laughs> this is one little like <laughs> consolation we've been given where we have the advantage. How dumb would it be not to use it when yeah. it would you know when I'm in a fight right now like just go why not go for it and and uh, and had no like shame about it yeah. I thought that was kind of fun uh, and and that kind of thing is uh, if you can't put yourself it's almost a, for men it's almost a sort of 
exercise in empathy. Yeah. If you can't put yourself in the position of someone for whom you would be kind of a natural um, competitor, yeah. and uh, you know, it, if you can't put yourself in someone else's shoes, that's not good. Right. Like, like I, I want to be able to to think what what is it like for women in the world. Um, what is it like uh, to go out at night and and think you know am I safe? Uh, do I need to carry a gun? Do I need to carry pepper spray? What's it like for women who are in law enforcement? Right, you know, all, all this kind of stuff. I think that's that's fun and and, and it's that's part of what what's fun about fiction, whether it's on the screen or in a book or what, is getting into someone else's shoes for two hours. Yes. And if it's someone just like you and you can relate really tightly to it, that's one kind of thrill. But if it's someone completely different from you and you have to learn to relate to them right. and 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 get on their team and, and, and completely identify with them, that's it. its own other kind of thrill. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. No, I, I agree one hundred percent, you know, and I think yeah, I think to me though, I think the fun thing about a good hero is like it it doesn't matter if the hero is is a man or a woman you know and, and the thing about captain marvel what made it what made this movie really great was you know it just it it was enjoyable i you know not once was i sitting there going you know oh i you know i wish she was a guy or you know what I, it's like no like it it fit the character and the personality everything just fit you know i think back um I read a, uh, or saw a really fascinating video, um, the movie Aliens with Sigourney Weaver. Um, yeah. You know, it, it's just it's fascinating because they did this comparison and were like, you know, she's not really this like, you know, the Butch Commando out there. And they and they had a couple of female Butch Commandos on the squad that she was with, you know, but she, you know, found the little girl Newt and was like. Everything that she was doing was from that motherly instinct of protecting her, you know, when she was kidnapped and captured, I'm going to get her back, you know, at mm-hmm. whatever cost, you know, and to me, like, uh, that's what you see, you know, in a mother, you know, I mean, I, I, I'm an administrator at a school, you know, and moms are great until, you know, their, their little cub is, Mm-hmm. You know, in danger, and then oh my goodness! You know, can you retract the clause, please? Um, yeah, no one ever says don't get between the father bear and his cubs. Yeah, that's not even a thing. Yeah, uh, and, and so yeah, even built into nature, right? We're seeing some some yeah. of this stuff. Yeah, and uh, and you know that's what I felt like was you know once once this character you know went beyond the kind of militaristic reasons for the things that she was doing and really the reasons why they were militaristic was because she had been brainwashed you know but once like that that brainwashing and that programming was breaking down and she was seeing all these other things like that instinct of protecting you know these people that she loved just really kicked in and it it was it was really great you know and so yeah again i I think, you know, we, we've kind of beat this to death, but I, I can't say it enough is I thought that there was a great portrayal of feminism in here, especially in a day and age where feminism is um, often misconstrued and, and portrayed so negatively on so many levels. Um, and it was a great picture of womanhood as well. Um, and it was a fun adventure movie that as a guy I could get behind and be like, yeah, go. Um, so yeah, you know, if, if you can get me into something that takes place with alien elements, Mm -hmm. you've done a great job. One other thing we should mention is how cool it is to get the crossover with characters. I kind of wish they would have had this come out before, um, the Infinity War because A, because then there would have been a much more of a oh my gosh moment in the after credit scene. Right, yes. And we wouldn't have gotten the cool, we still could have gotten the, no, we couldn't have got the cool after credit scene from Endgame. But there would have been that, but also um, because she then, this story actually ties the Earth Avengers yes. movies via yes. Nick Fury um, with. The Guardians of the Galaxy via Kohath, the Pursuer, right. Fuser, and yep. uh, like, like, Ronan, like, yeah. There's Ronan, the, yeah, yeah. So, like, 
there's a, a definite, uh, well, wait a minute, these two things are starting to come together. Right. Rather than just all of a sudden, who the heck are you guys? And there they are. Like, there would have been a little link in the chain. But that was really cool as well. And, and that guy, um, like, if you haven't seen Guardians 2, then probably don't listen. But that's the guy that gets, like, his half his head ripped off, right? Like yeah. Like, Implant, and so we know how he how his story ends, but we get to see a little more of it from early on. Yep, that kind of thing is fun to me. You know, like yeah. that nonlinear storytelling. Yeah, yeah. I, I you can tell that like particularly coming up toward um, the end, like you said, of whatever phase this is, um, that they're really they're trying to pull all the pieces together, and I think they're doing a really good job at. At tying these threads in there, and and you going, oh, okay, this is the timeline that I'm looking at. This is that you know phase point that where they are, and um, yeah, I mean the whole you know Nick Fury thing, bringing him in and where he was, um, you know, and to me they did a fantastic job with um, making him look younger, um, and you know the and same Coulson thing, too. yeah, exactly, you know, making them look younger, like it's okay, you know, this is. 15 years earlier and, you know, bringing those things together. So, yep, definitely agree. Well, should we talk a little Dragon Prince? I've got about 10 minutes. I don't know how, what your time on Okay. Is like. Yeah, I mean, let, yeah, let's go ahead and, uh, yeah, let's hit it, hit it up for 10 minutes. Um, so we're going to get to um, the, the really annoying part. Let's pull that out for a second because we're going we're gonna to get there. What did you think of season two? Oh, I thought it was a, a wonderful. It, it, I I can't even say what I thought of season two because it was so cohesive. I mean, the mm-hmm. it was a mild cliffhanger where they left off. Yeah, and basically what you felt was not. Oh my gosh, what happens next? It was. I want to watch more episodes. Yes. So season one and two just seemed like two parts of the same story without any demarcation to me. Yes. Um, I mean, there's there's the if you haven't seen Dragon Prince season one spoilers. There's the the hatching of uh, uh, not Ozymandias, Asimandias, Asimandias. Um, yeah. And, and uh, you know, so the, I mean, things have changed a little bit, but it was exactly as charming. I don't like that they changed the animation style to appease a bunch of whiny people yeah. and added more frames per second. I loved the feel, the old feel yes. uh, from season one, which reminded me a lot of a lot of stuff I used to watch yep. as, a, as a young kid. And But, you know, after three or four scenes, I was like, eh, all right, well, this is what we've got now. Right. And they, they, they still look the same. They're, they're still the same characters. Yeah. And I loved, I loved all of it. I, I felt like... Um, the the way they slowly are de- doling out more of this backstory of this this uh, kind of epic. Yeah. Uh, my son noticed mm-hmm. season two spoilers. <laughs> Just turn this <laughs> off if you don't care about it. If you haven't seen Dragon, um, my son's the one who noticed that uh, the name uh, given uh, for who owned I think it was who owned that cube. Or who forged it was the same as the guy who was in the mirror. Oh, okay. Um, and so that whoever that like Moon Elf is, he he, he who I thought was a she for a long time, right? Uh, until he spoke, um, is very central to this whole thing, the whole elf's realm and everything. And, and that made me think, man, they're gonna they're really gonna tease out more of this. There's got to be at least at least two more seasons of this. Yeah, yeah, uh, you would it, think. It's been it, it, it was really well done. I liked the amount of big action stuff and yep. and set pieces versus smaller scale like somebody's lost and we've got to find them kind of stuff versus conversations. Yep. And I love the slowly building friendship between Rayla and and uh, the humans. Yes. It, it's it was it was great. It was a it was a great story. Yep, and I mean, like the the cultural stuff that that uh, made me roll my eyes didn't poison it or anything for me. Right, right. Yeah, what are I your thoughts. Yeah, I totally. Again, I totally agree. I mean, I um, you still haven't seen uh, Avatar: The Last Airbender, right? No. Okay. Um, two people in our listening audience have offered to like hook me up with the DVDs, but I don't have them in hand yet. Okay. All right. Well, hopefully you'll get there. Um, but yeah, no, I agree. I thought I thought the development of the characters was going um, very well. Um, I'm enjoying um, the 
older brother. Um, what's his name? Soren. Yes, thank you. Uh, no, 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 not him. Uh, the the prince, the two princes. Um, oh, Callum. Yes, Callum. Thank you. I'm enjoying him especially in this season because he has a lot of. Um, since you know you already gave some spoilers, he has a lot of moments where he's like making self discoveries. Like he knows something is true about himself, and he's he's exploring that, you know. And it takes something, you know, bad in order for him to get to where he needs to be. But like, you know, as a human, he kind of falls in that gray area of things. But like, eventually, he figures out. Wait, no, no, no. As a human, I don't need to do this. I can flow here. And the cool thing is we don't know his full backstory yet, which I'm really looking forward to exploring. Like, you know, we know he's adopted, but we still don't know, you know, where he came from and we don't know what his, you know, full backstory is, how he came to live with this king and queen and uh, and I their family. I thought he was the natural son of the king's second wife. No, no, he's yeah. an adopted son. I thought. He, well, you know, he's adopted by the king, but the, his his mother. That when he drew the picture of his mother, Ezra was like, "Oh, that's our mother." Like they they share a mother. Oh, do they? Yeah, I have to go back and watch I'm that. I missed sure. that. Okay, I'll have to go back and watch that. I missed that. Uh, but there has to be something with him, right? Where he can tap into this magical world, or it's just a situation where. People were making assumptions that you have to be born into this stuff, right. but in reality, you can teach yourself and discipline yourself, and that's its own kind of interesting. Right, and so I've really enjoyed his, particularly his piece of self-discovery in season two and the things that he's learning, and um, you, you know, it's it's funny, but you, you do see the growth in the characters, you see the growth in the relationships between one another, and you know, you see the struggles that are going on with Soren and his sister and, you know, trying to obey the father. And, and, you know, I mean, he comes to that moment where it's like this really horrible thing happened to me, but really it's kind of cool because now I don't have to do this other horrible thing that my father wanted me to do, you yeah. know? And like, they just do a really good job at portraying the struggle of, you know, this is my job and position and I, I need to honor my father and I need to obey him and do what he says. And, but I know the thing he wants me to do is really horrible and I don't know if I can do it. Um, so, I mean, they really do a good job at bringing these characters to, to life and you investing in them and wanting to see more of them. And like you said, I mean, it got to the end and I was like, man, and now I got to wait for the next season because you're right. It wasn't like it was – it wasn't like season two where you know months and years have passed. It was like, no, no, no. This is part two of the story. Yeah, yeah. And I, I prefer that. Although sometimes this, it, 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 the story will need that kind of a, a jump. Yeah. But I, I, I prefer like when, when it picks up – like I love The Incredibles 2. Yes. Came out like nine years later but started like nine seconds yes. earlier than the first movie. And then you're like, oh, we're right back in this. I love it. Yeah. Uh, and, with, and you can do that within reason. You can do that with almost any animated deal. You know, I mean they're, they're – it's it's a young lady who does Ezrin's voice. She, her voice yeah. isn't going to change. It's right. not going to be a problem. Uh, the whole thing is is you know what you know what we should do. What's that? Let's not talk about let's not talk about the thing. Okay. Let's talk about I, the good I of mean, it. I'm I'm just I'm just feeling happy about the whole yeah. thing. No, let's talk about the thing. Okay. Here's the thing. <laughs> I I I said to you. I think I texted you while I was watching it. I was like, yeah. Again, like because yeah. in Netflix, and I saw this coming forever ago. Yeah. And I've been talking about it for 20 years. Yep. But, like, Netflix ha has determined that they're going to use children's programming now to normalize things that would have been considered, you know, sexually deviant. Right. Uh, a long, long time ago, like three years ago. Right. Um, and, and, you know, that, that things that have been, um, you know, stands that have been taken by really hardcore right-wing politicians like Bill Clinton and others – uh, who who said? Oh, I believe that that marriage is uh, for you know ten thousand years has been a man and a woman. So let's keep it there. Right. Um, so anyway, the Voltron animated series ends with this completely out of left field, completely just just done as a troll. Yeah. Uh, open mouth kiss between two men, and you're like, what? Just what? What? Yeah. And then I mean, they had they had like very tastefully. 
Here's the thing. I, I can, like I was just talking about putting yourself in somebody else's shoes. Yeah. I get if you're gay and you're like, dude, lots of people I know are gay. How come when I turn on TV, nobody's gay? Right. Unless it's like a very special episode of Melrose Place or whatever. Right. And then it's not a real character. It's like right. there as a prop. I get that. I, and, and fully, I would be pushing for that if that was me. Right. I get it. But but like um, where, where they have started like getting really overt about it. Like, I don't remember any men and women having a, an open mouth kiss on Voltron. Only the two men. Right. And granted, in Dragon Prince, they had already broken you know, what medieval type taboos we associate with the times where there are uh, kings and queens, and even when there were dragons, even though the dragons aren't real unless you ask Ken Ham. You know, we right, think of right, just right. a king and a queen together. So there were two queens. The characters were interesting. Mm-hmm. They um, sacrificed themselves. They were they were strong characters. I didn't miss. I, if it would have just been that, I'd have been like, okay, right. They had to put in like again. This is a, this is a movie or a show rather where there's been no PDA on screen. Right. They had to have these two women who are the two queens. You know, mash faces, and I'm I'm over here going, okay. First of all, what are you doing? Why 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 does this keep coming up? Right. Uh, it, other than you're trying to whatever little shock is left in anyone's you know mind about this, you're trying to burn through that, right. which is what the you know the, the Saul Alinsky kind of thing calls for. Right. And and then the other side is I'm going. This doesn't even make sense. So right. there's this young girl who was a cool character. Yeah. Who was a queen. Yep. Those were quote unquote her parents. My son looks at me and goes, "How can those be her parents?" I said, "I don't know. I, you know, we had the sex talk. You know what it takes to make a joke. right." Um, and and then <laughs> this, if it would have even just been that, and she would have been like, "Yeah, I really miss my my mom's." Right. Okay. Whatever. I mean, if if it takes place in a world like that, you've already done something like had interracial marriage, which I thought was cool. Right. Um, uh, biracial kids and stuff. Yeah. You now they can see themselves on screen. I don't care. I right. really don't. Teach your children. Don't let the TV teach your children. Sure. And decide what they can watch. But for for them to like really, really try and slip it in there deviously, you can tell there's an agenda in this case, in the case of Voltron, in the case of this show that my friend Alex, who was on the pod with me, yeah. he'd, he'd brought up a Netflix thing or, or on some streaming service that said five years and younger for his little three-year-old. And it was like a prince, and he did this thing where he could marry the princess. And at the end, it's this goofy animated thing, and he decides he'd rather marry the prince. And so, on the spot, marries the prince and two men. Um, and we're going, okay, kids are absorbing stuff. Can we be above board about about right. all of this? But, right. but what I was going to get at was the, the 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 queen then says, man... Sounds like the, like my 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 moms, my parents were really great. I wish I'd have been able to meet them. Right. And I'm going, right. wait a minute, how did you not ever, m- what? Right. Assuming even there was some kind of like sperm donor dad involved at some point, how would, I mean, like, I understand how your dad could die in battle before you're born. Right. But not your mom. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I wish I remembered them. Yeah. But I wish I could have met them. Uh, it's like they don't understand how the world works or they were intentionally trying to set up this absurdity right where a family is just nothing it's everything so it's nothing right and right. you can be the daughter of two women that you've never met right <laughs> <laughs> right i guess i guess they grew her in a test tube in a medieval kingdom i don't know yeah. and and i i struggle not to be this like james dobson let's just get mad about it because you know right. what that does it gives them ammunition. Right. And when I say them, I don't mean gay people in general. Most gay people don't care about the Dragon Prince or right. any of this stuff. They right. just live in their lives. I mean, I mean, probably straight, white, waspy liberals with uh, educations at Ivy League institutions who feel it's their liberal guilt-motivated job to push all this stuff. Yeah. And they want yeah. there to be kickback and backlash and vitriol. And I and I don't have any for you. Right. I just I'm confused by it. Right. And I'm a little annoyed by it. And it's not adding to your story. I can tell you that. It's just it's not doing anything for you. Yeah. Well and and I think that's the thing is like particularly, you know, like when like the timing of when they end up kissing is really awkward because they're still in imminent danger. 
You know, it's like they were going to die. And like, if I knew I was going to die and I was with my wife, I'd kiss her. I mean, maybe that was it. Maybe. But like, but like the thing was, they just had this kind of victory. But, but like, it was still like, okay, we got to get out of here fast. Wait, let's pause for a quick kiss. Like, you know, I mean, that's why they die, isn't it? Yeah. Isn't that, wasn't that it? Well, no, 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 no. (laughs) Well, they die in the land, but like, but like it was, they had just finished getting what they needed to get. And then it was like, yay, let's celebrate. Let's kiss. And then. Oh wait, we've got to get out of here because the sun's rising and we're going to be in trouble, you know. So like, and then they end up going back and doing the whole saving and rescuing thing. But like, okay. but like, yeah, it was like right after they had just had the victory of what was it? They needed to kill the fire troll or whatever it was, and um, so they had just done that and they were celebrating that. And it was, but it was like, you know, people are like in trouble and injured, and it's like. You know, there's this whole discussion of we need to get the wounded out of here. You know, let's take a moment and, you know, suck face for a couple seconds. Like, what? You know, I mean, and that's where it was like, I I felt like it came out of left field. It was like the timing and placement of it was just awkward. Um, Just like in Voltron. Yeah. So, you know, I think, I think that's the, you know, the big thing is like, you know, I, I don't, think there's an issue like you said you know if you're coming from you know this lifestyle and that's what you know you want to see yourself quote unquote portrayed in this then okay you know i i can understand that i i get that but like why is it so awkward you know i mean when when you know kissing and things like that are written uh into a screen set like there's there's a natural flow in things make sense. Like the, there wasn't anything that really made sense. And, and I, I can't speak to the Voltron thing cause I still haven't seen it. Um, I'm just kind of taking your word. I haven't been able to go back and watch that last season yet. Um, but like, like you said, it just, it comes out of nowhere and you're like, but huh? You know, and you're just sitting there scratching your head. Like I, you know, because they mention while they're telling the story that she had her two moms and I, and I, like you, I'm kind of hanging with that. Like, eh, okay, whatever, you know, this is medieval times. And like you said, the, the, or is it even, even on our world? Maybe it's somewhere else. Maybe. Yeah. yeah. I mean, but like, you know, assuming that things still work the same biologically, you're still scratching your head going, uh, this doesn't work, um, but whatever. Like, okay, they're gonna they're gonna put these characters in there, and it's gonna be what it's gonna be. But like, the timing of when they're going to demonstrate and show, you know, physical, you know, emotion toward, like, it just it didn't make sense in the context of what was going on at the time. It was set up for shock value. Exactly what it was. Exactly it was a cheap ploy, and the show is way above using cheap ploys. They didn't use any cheap ploys throughout. All the other episodes so far, right? No idea what other than maybe Netflix was like, oh, don't forget, you have right. to have that scene, right? Um, because we are wildly pro all the letters, right, and anti all the people who don't want their kids to, you know, see this stuff. So yeah, yeah. And granted, we know you and I know we're the bad guys here, right? From the cultural's point of view, right? If we weren't the bad guys from the the world's point of view, we'd be doing something wrong, right? Because uh, friendship with the world is enmity with God, yeah. And maybe you go, okay, well then why don't it says don't love the world and the things in the world? Why are you watching the show? It it hasn't gotten to the point where right it changes everything, right? You know, it 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 hasn't like when it's Frozen Three. Ilsa marries, you know, Marianne. Right. I won't see it. Right. Uh, and and I think they'll be surprised how many people don't see it. Yeah. I think that the world is very, very snowed right now. That because Hollywood upper crust and people on the the right and left coast are so the east and left coast rather are so. Right. Uh, <laughs> completely sold out to this and that that uh, a bunch of little kids who don't have any life experience at all right. go, okay, we're all on board. They think that America itself is in a different place than it really is. And, and I, I don't think I, – I mean I don't think this whole this whole push is going to just keep going in this direction. Yeah. I think there's going to be a pendulum swing back. I think there's going to be a bubble bursting 
Right. And it'll be interesting to see how it plays out. Yeah. Yep. Cool, man. This uh, this has been a good one. Nice, fun uh, second week in a row podcast for us. And uh, if I knew anything about Brie Larson, I think that she probably would hate us if she heard the last <laughs> ten minutes of discussion. But uh, who cares? You're an actor pretending to be someone else, right? And the movie you made was super cool, right? Right. Well, it's funny because Greg and I—I uh, I think I actually said this on the podcast. We were talking about. Tom Cruise and I was like, yeah, I mean, I think Tom Cruise is a total, you know, d bag as a person, but like he's a, he's he's a fun actor. Like Dude, Tom go- Cruise is a super nice guy. Haven't you read any of the like the the things that the other actors have said about him? He's super nice, except for if you want to leave his cult. Well, <laughs> are, aren't they all? <laughs> <laughs> no, but like uh, the guy who plays Nick Miller, um, Jake Johnson. Uh, when they made the Mummy together, he wrote this thing about my, my wife showed it to me. How like he was just he was just insanely nice. And uh-huh. He's always helpful, and he's always like like he's probably a really nice guy. He's right. fallen into a. It doesn't change his acting ability, right? right. I mean, who cares? Right. I, I, I'm never gonna. And it's the same thing with. I don't care if you're um, playing sports, whether right. you're a Christian or not, because I don't care about sports on right. TV. Um, so, you know, if you're good at playing the sport, good for you. Right. If you love Jesus, good for you. Right. I don't care. Right. Yeah. It's, 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 it's a, a confusion of categories. Right. Whether you're a, a nice guy or a good actor. Right. Or what. Yeah. Yep. Totally agree. All right, man. Well, great episode. Look forward to coming back next week and, and doing it again. Uh, we going to have one Greg Dutcher with us next week? Uh, I'm going to try to. Yeah, I'm going to try to have him on uh, next week for us because actually we've got a really cool topic that uh, I'm just going to tease. You and I will talk about when uh, we cut it off, but uh, I'm just going to tease it for now. Really good topic that we're going to talk about. So I'm going to try to get him on for that one. That Uh, was the tease? It's really good? It's really good. (laughs) You're not much of a tease, Nathan. Well, I know. I mean, I guess that's true. All of our topics are really good, so. <laughs> You're supposed to show a little, uh, like, like there's, tropical thigh there or okay, something. And okay, say, so. See, there's a little, a little some, some pebble for people to find. All right, so here we go. So, so the tease is actually a, a question from one of our listeners that breaks into the potential category of, uh, you know, maybe like some Rob Bell universalism stuff. How's that? And it's not it's not next month that we're doing uh, the New Testament Reformation thing that we got the books for. Uh, it's not next week. Next I think week? it's the week after. Okay. I think it's the week okay. after. We you said know the, what you know. I don't know. Yeah, I think it's <laughs> I think it's the twenty eighth. I think it's the week after. Nothing like doing a little like uh, scheduling and, and stuff on the air. Hey, man. Why don't you take us home, man? That's Sorry. right. <laughs> we're, we're pros on this thing. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, dude. All right, man. Well, we're going to go ahead and sign off now. Zach, we just rocked the Casbah. These go to 11.